child that growing today, their world is the globe. It's not just the people around them. They are interacting across the globe. And that is a new reality that as people who are working with people, we need to keep in mind and the opportunities and challenges that it provides for us. Our children are critical for us as leaders to take into consideration. There is understandable concern about the radicalization of Muslim youths. But of far greater concern, and let's listen to what Bloomfield is saying here, but of far greater concern should be the unradicalization of Christian youth. Bloomfield is saying that what should concern us is not the radicalization of Muslim youth. What should concern us is the unradicalization of, of Christian youth. It means that Christian youth used to be radical, but have now been unradicalized. So Bloomfield says the problem we have today is that there has been unradicalization of Christian youth. He goes on to say, the whole problem with our youth is that too many are rooted, not in Christ, but in the world. Rather than being encouraged to pattern his or her life after Christ, the modern Christian is actively encouraged to pursue the good life, the health and wealth gospel, says Bloomfield. So that our young people today are growing in a context where we, they are encouraged for the good life. That's what they hear pastor preaching every Sunday. You know? So they, don't, they have not learned this thing of struggling and being radical for Jesus that used to be there. So, the disturbing question, therefore, where are the Christian madrasas? We need a generation who live no longer for themselves, but for Christ who loved us enough to die for us. So I ask us, what will it take to radicalize our youth? This is a positive radicalization. I propose the Mordecai strategy. The Mordecai strategy has three components that I would like to share with us. One is sacrificial parenting. Two is strategic placement. And three is supportive prodding. And when we were doing the 414 window back in 2009, uh, we were talking about how to reach children and youth. And when I heard what I was hearing and compared with the growth of our church as Sitam, I realized that the growth of our church as Sitam was as a result of children and children ministry. And so it, I suddenly realized here is a contradiction. Our church growth has been a result of children but our church buildings are not for children. This is the contradiction. So when we now went to Parkland, we said, anywhere we are putting up churches, we must provide children. So this was our first building that we put up, and it has facilities for children and facilities for young people we had to reduce the size because the, the ground was very constrained. We had to reduce the size of the main hall for the adults so that we can have adequate facilities for children. When we went to Ngong, some of you have seen our building in Ngong, the youth hall is almost the same size as the main adult hall and done to very excellent standards. The children's Classrooms are equally well done. The equipment and everything is the same. A transformation on how 
we do church for children. But All Saints Cathedral has just, is it two or three weeks ago? You mentioned it. Put up an excellent, huge facility. This is an impression of the inside of the hall that is set up for the deaf children. <laughs> 36 classrooms for children. They had already put up a youth hall before that. It tells you there's an intentionality about reaching children. It is not a by accident. It is an intentionality. So if we are going to reach our children, they are operating in the cyberspace. They are interacting with high level things. They are interacting with high level technology. And you want them to sit in a tent where it is raining while the adults are enjoying the good space. That's what we used to have in Valley Road. We were enjoying our good space as adults. Children were in tents outside. It means we had not thought of how we are going to confront the challenges that are facing our children. So the people who are coming for our children are coming with high quality things, high quality products, high quality spaces. When they go for their discos, they go in a very nice place. When they go for their parties, they go to a very nice place. But when they come to church, where are they sitting? Under the tree. Isn't it? And you expect them to stay and to listen to the majestic God who can only afford a tent the glorious God who cannot give us a seat to sit on. There's something that doesn't connect, isn't it? And these people get captured and slowly by slowly our children and our youth are being taken away from us. Number two, strategy for Reversing the tide by Mordecai. In Esther chapter 2 verse 8 it said, When the king's order and edict had been proclaimed, many girls were brought to the citadel of Susa and put under the care of Haggai. Esther was also taken to the king's palace and entrusted to Haggai who had charge of the harem. You know the story of Esther. The king has separated with his wife Vashti because of disobedience and is now looking for a new wife. I don't advise you to do this. <laughs> <laughs> don't practice this at home. <laughs> so many girls are brought so that the king can choose for himself. Mordecai, who was working in the office of the president, decides I'll also take my cousin, Esther. So Esther is also taken. In verse 10, the Bible says, Esther had not revealed her nationality and family background because Mordecai had forbidden her to do so. Then it says, in verse 11, every day, every day, Mordecai walked back and forth near the courtyard of the harem to find out how Esther was and what was happening to her. So this is not a matter of pushing the child to school and let the teachers take care. It's a matter of going every day to find out, how is Esther? How are you doing? What is going on? So that in case she's being taught anything that was out of line, he could nab it, uh, snip, nip it on the, in the bud. Every day, the Bible says, 
he walked back and forth near the courtyard of the harem to find out how Esther was doing. Strategic positioning. So the Bible tells us then Mordecai therefore ensured that he identified the opportunity and there are many opportunities for us. He took Esther to the contest. He advised Esther how to conduct herself. Don't say you are a Jew, otherwise you won't get a job. He walked with Esther through the process. And I believe as people who are being called to parent these children who do not have fathers and mothers, this is what we are being called to do. That we walk with these children to navigate the cyberspace that has become their world. Then number three, supportive prodding. When a decree was issued against God's people, Esther was requeted, requested but was unwilling to help or afraid to help. Mordecai challenged her to take action. And we can say Mordecai radicalized Esther. Do you notice what Esther said? I'm going to the king. If I perish, that is a radicalized child. That's the one that puts a bomb around the waist and goes to perish because of a cause that they have been told is very important. So Esther takes bombs and puts around her waist and says, if I perish, I perish. Radicalized. Because Mordecai has said, okay, you think that you are now in a good place. He didn't say that you don't remember I'm the one who put you there. And that you will be safe. You know, if you do not do something, God will come through for us in another way. But as for you and your house, you'll see the consequences. Radicalized youth. Esther says, I'm going to go. And she uses wisdom and saves her people. It is in such radicalization that we will be able to help our children navigate the place where they find themselves today. Today's society has issued decrees against God's purpose. Young people are able but unwilling to help the cause of the gospel and the kingdom. There is need for prodding to action. There's need for us to prod them to action after we have done the other footsteps. The risks are real, but the cause is a necessity. There's a big movement right now to transform the thinking of our children and our youth. So that all the things that we have taught them and we have told they are important, all those are going to be turned upside down so that those things are thrown out of the window. You have heard of C, uh, what do you call it? CSE. Comprehensive Sexuality Education, which we have been fighting here in this country as a church not to be introduced. They are working hard to get it through. Just this last week, we had a serious debate and argument over this matter. The family foundation, they are working hard to destroy it.